When it comes to publishing low content books, it is no secret there is a lot of competition out there. And if you don't know how to make your book stand out from the crowd, then you don't really stand a chance. Now, fortunately for you, as someone who is interested in creating quality over quantity, most other low content publishers are failing pretty miserably in this area. So if you are one of those people that puts a little bit of extra time and effort into helping your books stand out from the crowd, that will pay off with more sales. My name is Rachel Harrison Sund and I help people create and sell journals, planners, notebooks, and more on the Kindle Direct publishing platform. If this sounds like something you're interested in, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time I put out one of these videos each Monday. Okay, the first tip is to know your target audience. This is probably one of the biggest mistakes I see other publishers make. I don't know when I look at their book who they are trying to talk to. You need to be extremely specific about exactly who you're trying to sell your books to. It is not enough to just say women over 30 or kids age five to seven. You gotta think about exactly who they are, who are their, what are their interests, um, what are their values, how old are they, are they married, are they educated? Basically, absolutely everything that you can think about would, which would pertain to this one particular audience member. Now you can go so far as to create what's called an ideal customer avatar, and that essentially is just a customer profile, including everything I've just mentioned, plus anything you could possibly think about drilling down as specifically and deeply as possible. You can even go so far as to give this person a name if you want to. This is something that I do in my own business and I find it really, really helpful so that I can gear all my messaging toward speaking to that one particular person that is my ideal customer. Once you know exactly who you're dealing with, this is going to inform all of your design decisions moving forward, including, including your cover, um, your interior, and it's, it's also going to determine the type of language that you use when you're coming up for, uh, with titles or for your book descriptions and so on. So let me know how well do you actually know your target audience? Do you even know who your target audience is? And if you do, how well do you think you know them? Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, the second tip is to look for gaps in the market. So think about this in terms of when they zig, you zag. It can be really tempting to jump on trends, but oftentimes these trends are really oversaturated. Nobody is going to find your floral planner in the sea of floral planners that already exist out there. You need to think about what target markets are already being heavily represented, and then try and dig a little deeper to discover which target markets aren't represented at all or underrepresented, and that's where you wanna focus in. The third tip is to produce eye-catching, professional quality cover designs. Remember, your book cover is your book's first impression, so it really does have to uh, catch the eye of a customer that's scrolling through a sea of other book covers. You know, your book cover really does need to be as good as, if not, well, preferably better than what's already on offer. Now, if you're a professional designer, clearly you've got an advantage in this area, but if not, you can totally fake it by using high quality stock imagery from a website like Creative Fabrica. I've uh, got a, a video right here you can check out if you wanna learn a little bit more about Creative Fabrica, but they are generally the stock image company that I recommend for low content uh, publishing because they have what I think is the best license for low content books. It's also a good idea to familiarize yourself with some basic design principles. I've left a link down in the description below to a series of videos that can really help you out in this area. Um, typography especially is something that brand new designers or people that just you know really aren't too familiar with design concepts um, really tend to struggle with. So another program I like to use called Canva, they are great for helping you out with this. They have got font pairing templates, which you can basically just drag and drop onto your cover and swap out the text. And uh, you'll end up with a really nicely paired couple of fonts for the title on your cover. So I've linked to Canva below as well. And then of course, like I already mentioned, you've got to think about how your cover is going to look in, re in relation to all the other covers out there. So when a customer is scrolling up and down, either on their phone or on their computer, how does your book cover, how's it going to look in relation to all the other books? Is it going to just blend right in because you've done a copycat design or is it really going to stand out amongst the sea of other books? That's what you've got to ask yourself. All right, the fourth tip is to create a compelling title for your book. Now, your, your title should spark a little bit of an interest, and ideally it should contain one or two or maybe even three 
relevant, low competition keywords. But remember, it needs to be able to sound natural. Um, if someone, you know, give it the saying it out loud test. If you can say it out loud and it sounds like a real book title that you might find at like Barnes and Noble or something, then you're good to go. But if it just sounds a little bit unnatural and like you've just stuffed way too many keywords in there, that's not going to help you. First off, Amazon doesn't like that. You're not allowed to, to keyword stuff. And secondly, it ends up making your book look amateurish and low quality. So you want something that will spark interest, Throw a couple of keywords in there if you can, but keep it sounding natural. Don't keyword stuff. Also, don't include any physical book properties. Um, so you don't want to include that it's, you know, like an eight by 10 book and it's got 130 pages and it's got a matte cardstock cover or any of those things. Customers can find that information themselves if they um, scroll down the page a little bit. So this is just going to junk up your title and make it look amateurish. Okay, the fifth and final tip is to optimize your book listing. So firstly, you want to create a compelling, error-free, grammatically correct, properly formatted book description. When I say properly formatted, I mean formatted with HTML. Now I tackled this in my webinar, Three Steps to a Wildly Profitable Low Content Publishing Business. Um, I talk all about the five steps to creating a book uh, a book description that sells. If you haven't checked out that free webinar, please do go ahead and click on the link that I've left in the description below, and you can learn all about how to create a really stellar book description in that webinar. Also make sure you've got an author central account and that you're adding each published books uh, book to that account. This is just a nice sort of centralized area where all your books can live. So if anyone decides to click on your author name, they can actually see all your books. So that will just increase your discoverability slightly uh, for each of the books that you publish if anyone decides to check out your author page. Another way to optimize is to take advantage of A plus content. And if you don't know what that is, or if you haven't used it out yet, then be sure to check out this video here where I show you basically everything about what A plus content is and the best way to use it. Before A plus content came along, it was really hard to showcase the interior of our low content books unless people were on a desktop and they could view it through the look inside feature. Look inside feature is not available on, on uh, mobile devices, which as we all know, a lot of shoppers are shopping on their mobile devices. You know, most of us weren't happy with the fact that we weren't able to showcase what the insides of our books look like and show the value that we are offering inside, which I think is especially important with low content books. You know, not super important for novels or nonfiction or anything like that, but for low content books where, you know, a lot of the value comes from the design that we're creating for those interior pages, this is a great feature to add. So that's definitely a way that you can optimize your book listing. And then finally for optimization, make sure that you're priced competitively. So if most books, most similar books in your niche are selling for $8.99 and you put yours at $18.99, you're not likely to get any sales. So you don't necessarily have to price it the exact same as what other books are, are uh, pricing their books. And you don't need to undercut either. If you think that your book is higher value than some of the other ones out there, go ahead and tack on an extra dollar or two if you think it's worth it. Um, or you can just play it safe and kind of, you know, put it at the same price that all of the other books are going. You could undercut if you want to do it like a dollar cheaper or something like that. But what I have found is that can actually harm you rather than help you a lot of the times because a lower price often just says to a customer lower value. So that can actually be off-putting to certain customers. For me, I have almost always had my book prices at like one or sometimes even $2 above um, what some of the other books in that niche are going for. I just know that my books are a little bit higher quality when it comes to the design, so I'm comfortable doing that and it's worked out well for me. So you might wanna play around with this, but the main point here is don't price it wildly above what everyone else is um, pricing their books at because this obviously is going to affect your sales. Keep these tips in mind when creating your own standout books and let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway was. If you haven't already, download my free guide, Three Steps to Publishing Your First Low Content Book in Less Than a Day. Link to that is down in the description below. Join my free Facebook group, Low Content Profits, also linked to down in the description below too. 
If you're new and you haven't got any book sales just yet, but you've published a few books, be sure to check out one of my most recent videos here, why your low content books aren't selling and what you can do about it. And if you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, share it with your friends. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.